everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 134. We're coming at you live, post-game, Sharks, <laughs> Carolina... Um, the, what? What? you laughing at me already? Post-game from a win. <laughs> yeah, post-game from a win. Sharks, Carolina Hurricanes, 2-1 overtime win, gutsy. Uh, Barrett Bonov picks up the OT winner after having left the game briefly uh, with some head contact. Yeah, he got there. hit pretty hard. He got yeah. hit hard in, uh, what, two games ago, and then he gets, it gets hit again. Uh, in this game, so, uh, or sorry, it was three games ago against Minnesota, mm-hmm. he got hit in the head, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but yeah, great to see him bounce back and come back in the game and get the winner. It was a nice shot, too. Yeah. It wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and you take a look at that one, you got uh, Hurdle sliding a pass underneath, I don't know who it was, the defenseman, but underneath his chin, underneath yeah. his elbow, underneath his armpit, uh, there was a hole about that big, a mouse could fit through it. Yep. And uh, he just threaded the puck right in. And as soon as he got, I saw the puck squeak through, I go, that's it, game over. Yeah. Barbonov just buries it, beautiful stuff. And then LeBanc getting uh, off the schneid, as they say, first of the season. Uh, third. Third of the season, of the season. okay, because someone said it was first. Sorry, third. Third, okay, good. I was going to say, I, I misheard it. I was no, like, that can't be his first. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Yeah, okay, good. I was going to say, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, right. to be honest, if yeah. that was the case. Yeah, right. But uh, so him getting his third of the season there. So, uh, and that was kind of a later one, too, wasn't it? That was a snipe, too. Yeah. That was in the third. That was uh, four minutes, almost four minutes into the third period mm-hmm. to tie up the game. Uh, I feel like this is a game the Sharks, at least in the first two periods, had no business coming back and winning. But keeping. Credit to the Sharks for keeping them to a one yeah. nothing, yeah. Uh, only a one nothing deficit, to, uh, to be able to claw back into the third period. And uh, Reimer, should we talk about Reimer now? Oh, we can talk about Reimer now. I mean, <laughs> it, but before we do, actually, I want to just uh, do a, a couple things. One, sure. um, I was watching with my kids at home, and uh, they're competitive. They play uh, travel roller, and my other son plays travel ice. And I was pointing out a lot of things that the Canes were doing right and that the Sharks were doing wrong. Um, so it was, it was kind of interesting, kind of like those coaching moments mm-hmm. uh, with, with younger kids and saying, okay, we're, you know, we're rewinding and playing and rewinding and playing. And then they say, okay, what's he doing wrong here? And he's telling me what the, what's going on and everything. So it was just kind of an interesting moments. Unfortunately, more things going wrong for the Sharks <laughs> than for the Canes there. One of the things I did notice was the Canes pressure, pressure, pressure all the time uh, when the par- Sharks have the puck in the defensive zone. Yeah. Um, when the Canes have the puck in the defensive zone, they send one guy in, the Sharks do. And that's just not enough. You make one pass, and you don't have to worry about it anymore, and you start breaking up the ice. So um, just kind of interesting, these kind of teaching moments that I get to have with my kids, uh, being able to watch the game right. and doing that with them. And they're understanding it, so it's, it was really, that's, really interesting that's stuff. That's the better part, I yeah. guess, right? Yeah, no, for sure. So, so you're breaking tape down with your children. Absolutely, <laughs> I am. Six and uh, eight years old, and we're watching film. That's how we do it. That's so. awesome. <laughs> anyway, um, Reimer. Let's go ahead and talk about Reimer then. So... He's standing on his head. Yeah, he's he's unreal. Yeah, this I mean, this is kind of obviously who the Sharks wanted when they brought him in um, to play and to upgrade from Martin Jones. I mean, Martin who, right? <laughs> so uh, he's been unreal, thankfully, because Hill has not been that great lately. But I think we kind of knew that was going to happen. Another reason why they brought Reimer in is because Aiden Hill's a younger guy and he's right. still kind of learning the ropes and and being more consistent than he has been. So Reimer has been the steady rock in the back in net. Uh, even that the game that he gave up four goals in, I told you earlier, he was still over 900 save percentage. Yeah. If that was Martin Jones, that would have been 700. <laughs> <laughs> With that many shots on goal? Yeah, right. probably yeah. the case. Um, so, gosh, you know, the, the nice thing about Hill when, when they picked him up, the thing that we were really excited about was his high danger save percentage was very high. Mm-hmm. Uh, given a small sample size of games, still... Um, shows how much skill he has in, in the, the high, those high danger areas, puck mm-hmm. in tight, and he's making those big saves. Uh, so far this season, maybe not so much, but Reimer, top of the list in the league in terms of high danger save percentages. Yeah. He's the, the number one, the first top. overall. Yeah, yeah that's the not top. like he's near the top. He yeah. is the top. He's the man. Yeah. Not only is he the man, it was at what, 915? 915. 915 yeah. save percentage well, in high danger. Well, before tonight's game, but yes. And it probably got better since right. then. Yeah. So 915 save percentage uh, prior to tonight's game, the only goaltender in the league above 900 mm-hmm. in terms of high danger save percentages. Uh, Aiden Hill, although showing that he's adept in that, a category as well this season, 36 in the league at .788. I'm sure he's going to get better from there. No worries, at least not yet, especially when you got a guy like Reimer who's kind of stepping in and doing a good job of, uh, of you know, being that number one right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with both goalies. I think I'm happier with Reimer, obviously, right now. I mean, why wouldn't you be? He's the top of the league. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, really good stuff out of the goalies. Anything else to add about the goaltending? 
Oh, I just it's nice to have solid goaltending back there. You're not worried about it. In fact, yeah. you're, you're kind of now you're expecting them to make those saves, right? So more pressure on them. Maybe that's why we're kind of like not so much down on Aiden Hill, but right. just not as high as we are with Reimer. Right. And that's fair. Yeah. So we're going to pause here to uh, show you the banner on the bottom of the screen. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys are enjoying the stream, uh, stream, not scream, uh, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up <laughs> button. Don't scream at us, please. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if, if you uh, are interested in being in some of these lives, uh, having the comments going, having us answer your questions, using the super chat, using Venmo, uh, we'd love to have you guys subscribe to us so that you know that when we're going live and you can be a part of this uh, as well as uh, all your friends that are in the chat along there with you, please feel free to share that as well and make sure that you're hitting the notification bell so that you do get the notification when we do go live. Yeah, so Scott with a good comment here. <laughs> oh. There could be more live views if you advertise your channel schedule. Love you guys. Yes, uh, we were supposed to go live last night. I wasn't feeling so great, so we pushed it to tonight, which I think worked out better because of the game. Yeah. I think we'll get more people, and it's a Monday night, not a Sunday night. I don't know. Normally, our schedule is Sunday nights, uh, and now that we have the lives working, we'll be doing Sunday night lives. Un Wait, it's working? <laughs> it's kind of working. <laughs> no gremlins, fingers crossed. Depends but. on like depends on our schedule. Yeah. But that's the normal schedule would be Sunday Night Live. So uh, keep that ingrained in your head, I guess. If, if this was our job, like, <laughs> and this is like what we did, It'd be more consistent. Uh, it right? would definitely be more consistent. But uh, you know, we're kind of like you, except we have an awesome producer behind the cameras that uh, does everything for us. Makes so. us look way better than yeah. we are. In fact, uh, it says down there, enjoying the stream. Give us a like. Why don't you give us a like if you appreciate Super Producer Jason? He'll be very <laughs> upset if we don't have 100 likes by the end of the, this run here. So another good comment from yes. Brian. Going back to you watching footage with the kids. Go ahead, uh, Daddy. I want to go to bed. No, no. <laughs> not until we go through this whole game and you list everything the Sharks did wrong. Yeah, I mean, come on. You want to be winners or what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. Thank you, thank you, Ryan, for uh, for giving me the the light ribbing there. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're happy with tonight's game. Obviously, all is well and good there. Well, um, I wouldn't say I'm happy about tonight's game. You're not I'm happy. happy they won. Okay, I just don't think they played a very well. Played a game very well. Okay. Uh, the first two periods. Yeah, I would say the... the f yeah, I think you're right. The they first two periods... They seemed sluggish. They seemed... I, I, not that I don't like when they win, but I don't like when they win playing poorly because sure. I think it creates bad habits. So I think uh, hopefully they stomp those out before the next game on Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just... I feel like they woke up in the third period, which is great. I feel yeah. like they've been doing that actually this... All every game this year, yeah. like waking up and coming out in the third period. I don't know what it is. Bugner's going out there and, and really giving them a great motivational talk in between the periods. But I, th I think it's better to play poorly in the first period or two and fall behind a little bit and then kind of get that, that stern talking to, that burst of energy, make come into the third. Make, yeah, exactly. Come in, in the third, make those adjustments, score a goal, get to OT, score. You feel a lot better about yourself. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, let's say they still won an OT, but they went up by a goal and then they just started falling behind for the rest of the game, then it's like, oh man, you know? And then, okay, they pull it off, great, that's a good win, but it just doesn't feel quite as good, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I, I mean, for me, yeah, I think the first two periods could have definitely been better, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the battle, and we've talked about that with this team uh, so yeah. far this season. They are not one to give up, right? They, they will keep pushing, they will keep trying. Um, they don't just throw in the towel. This is the culture change that he's, that Bugner's been talking about for the last three now seasons. Yeah. Uh, since he came in, so I think uh, this is exactly where the team needs to be. I think uh, mainly because if you look at the team that went to the the conference cha championship, conference finals, finals yeah. um, that's a much different team than what we had the year after that. Pavelski's gone; just a number of different moves. Um, they don't have; they didn't have the skill that they could rely on scoring their way out of problems, right. and they didn't know how to transition into back into a team of. Hey, we need to stick up for each other. Like a culture change. They, yeah. It wasn't sticking. It wasn't working uh, up until, for whatever reason, this season. I mean, most likely because they had a training camp here. Mm -hmm. They were able to, you know, they weren't living in a hotel for two months. They weren't living under the COVID restrictions where they can't even intermingle with each other yep. outside of the games. Like, it's just, it was a lot. It was a lot mentally. So, I think they finally... it. it 
It was a mental change, yeah. and it was hard to do mentally during that cha- during that time. There's there's one other thing that's changed, um, which I don't know if we want to talk about that now. <laughs> there are a few games you guys let, can let us know. There are a few games that happened previous uh, to this one here that we could talk about first, or we could talk about the uh, kind of elephant that entered the room, uh, whose G wagon showed up. At Solar for America Ice uh, oh this this week. I guess we're going into it. Now. Are we going to go into it? Sure. All right. And Vander Kane, uh, his his G wagon. It sounds like that's not the actual name of a car. Is that the actual name? Is Mercedes G wagon? Was it Mercedes or is it a Range Rover? I think it's a Mer- I think it's a Mercedes G wagon is the name of the car. Oh, it's one of those, and I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but it, to me, it just sounds like slang for like. His cool car, right? <laughs> it's the G wagon. Like I don't know. That's just. <laughs> Do I need to Google this right now? Probably should. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so uh, he shows up, uh, or his car is is seen there. It really is a G class. So okay. G wagon. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> it just sounds like it's some slang. Anyway, uh, yeah. No. So his 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 car shows up uh, in the lot, presumably because he drove it there, uh, and and he's uh, apparently skating at the at the rink there now. So. Right. Her, Tomas Hurdle was asked about this right. uh, in, in an interview that they had. That was, was this morning. That was this morning. It was yeah. pre-game. So um, we actually do have a clip of this. I don't know if you want to set this clip up at all. but uh, He was he was asked a couple questions of like, hey, you, I, we saw that Kane was practicing. Um, you know, have you, has you or anyone else talked to him? Yeah. Uh, would he be welcome back on the team? And Hurdle, I mean, to his credit, and I feel bad for him and, and anyone else who's going to be taking questions because yeah. they're – most likely, any of the veterans are going to be asked about Kane, and uh, he was kind of just put on the spot. But I, I mean, I think he knows it's coming at the same time. Yeah. So anyway, here's the clip of uh, Hurdle talking, and I love Hurdle clips. So here we go. Uh, Tomas, uh, Evander's Kane is skating at Sharks Ice. Uh, have you or any of your teammates uh, spoken with him since he's been back in town? Here? Uh, no, I didn't talk to him, and I don't know anybody really like to saw him or talk to him. So. Uh, honestly, I didn't really know what is like n- next step or whatever because I'm like you guys. I don't know what what will happen there. Well, I guess uh, my ne- next question then might you may not be able to answer it, but at this point, is he welcome back to the Sharks? Uh, you know, like honestly, like it's we we don't really talk at all. But you know, it's uh, he's come. You know, he's he will be part of the team. But like I I don't even be, like really thinking about it because I just focus in game the game and I want to just be in the games right now and I don't know what will happen there and and just focus forward for tonight game because we desperately need you know two points. I guess you, you just answered this but would it help to know what the corner of the show with the team plan is for, for you guys? Uh, yeah you know it's it's a tough situation so like if, you know we, we we don't really, you know, except kind of you guys. We don't talk in the room. What is happened? We always talk who is in the in the in the locker room. It was, you know, it was like very much COVID out there. You know, we, we knew like guys been out for a while, and you just focus in, you know, to win the games. That's our job to, you know, focus in for the winning games and play the best we can that night, and not focus in other stuff because you know it's kind of out of the reach. So we just focus in, you know, right now for for the games. Oh well, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> uh, I love Hurdle. Um, not really quite an answer, but there are a couple things in there where he asked if anyone had talked to him. He said no, not that I know of. So I don't know where this is going. I don't know. Like I, I wish they would just come out and say what they're going to do, but they're obviously not going to do that until. Well, suspension is done by the 1st, I think, December 1st. He's eligible to come back. I think they're being truthful. I don't think they know what they're going to do yet. I just think that it's odd that they don't know or that it's odd that they haven't talked to him. It's odd that they haven't talked about it in the room or they're just saying that so they don't have to talk about it to the media. Like, I can't imagine going into that locker room as a player and is his stall there? Is it sitting there? Like, is it sitting there with his... Jersey hanging? Like, is it awkward? Is it completely emptied out? Is it wiped gone? Like, they don't see anything of him? Well, as far as we know, he's still considered a non-roster player. So, no, he his stall wouldn't be set up, right? Right. So, I mean, that that shouldn't be what there. What about a practice? I, he's not doing practices. He was just over there skating, apparently. Right. Well, I mean, like, does he have a stall? Like, does everyone have a stall for practice? Do they move those around as well? No idea. Yeah, no clue. It's just, it seems, it seems weird yeah. that he and, not just so much Hurdle, but, like... 
the apparently the room just doesn't talk about it. Yeah. And Bugner doesn't really talk about it. He doesn't know. I think that's to me, I think yeah. that's wrong. I don't I think he's not that he's lying. I think he just doesn't want to talk about it, and so he says he doesn't know. That's my thought. Which is probably the you're probably bang on, but I would not put it past management to to honestly maybe they have an idea of what's happening or what's going to happen, we're, but just not passing that information on just yet. But we're like a week away. I like, know. <laughs> I feel like they should. There should be something there. You know, they should have some kind of discussion with it. Yeah. I. I don't know. I. What are your thoughts on him coming back? Well, I, I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, actually, before we get into my thoughts on him coming back, let's add a little more fuel to the Evander Kane fire. There's there was another report, a TMZ report. I don't know how much stock he put into this, but TMZ is TMZ. Well, so they got the they got the court docs, so they got to read the court docs. Right. It wasn't right. like hearsay. So go ahead and explain what that's all about, because that there's the uh, accused of a fake pregnancy test. No, is that the case? No, that she was faking being pregnant for longer than she was because uh, she had an abortion. Okay. It's not really good. It's kind of heavy stuff to talk about. Oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Misunderstood that one. Yeah. No, it's it's fine. Uh, that came out today, and, and um, there's just a whole lot of back and forth between the two of them, and neither of them look good. Okay. I'll just say it that way. And to me, it's not even his off, off-ice stuff, that stuff. Yeah. Like, Whatever, deal with your personal stuff. I mean, don't be a wife beater. That's awful. Right. Don't, you know, any of the other stuff that supposedly, she, I think she retracted now. So who knows what's going on. But to me, the bigger issue for shark stuff, I mean, assuming that he didn't do that. So I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't even want to say that that stuff doesn't count. Right, right. But uh, as his teammates look at it and go, he was late to practices uh, habitually, like, in, or yeah, missing yeah, yeah, meetings. Yeah, yeah. Um, he faked a vaccination card. That's huge. Yeah. That, that could possibly be a federal offense. Mm-hmm. So, um, outside of just being disrespectful to your teammates' general health, right? Right. Like you're you're putting yeah. them, not just them, but their families at risk. Right. You know. So, I, to me, that's just it's such a terrible thing to do to your team. Um, outside of being just seems like a terrible person outside of <laughs> hockey. So, I, it and. It, this is like, I know every single Sabres fan and every single Jets fan are going, ah, I told you so. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. only a matter of time before any of that stuff came out. So, um, I don't, to me, I st- I'm still in the same boat of I wouldn't want him back on the team. I, I, I feel you there, and I and I'm, I'm mostly agree with you. Here's where I, I uh, am unsure, okay, is the, the team doesn't want him back, apparently, right? The players are saying... Um, that had, no one's really said uh, when asked the question, what, is he welcome back in the locker room? Nobody said yes, if you've noticed. Everyone yeah. said, well, you know, we'll have to see what happens. And blah, 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 right? Not, they're not saying what, we'll see what happens. They're saying theoretically, if he was in, back in the locker room, would he be welcome back? You can answer that yes or no. And no one has answered that yes just yet. Not that they said no, but no one said okay. yes. right? Mm-hmm. So it seems that he's not welcome in the locker room. The thing is, the Sharks do need scoring right now. I, I, and I'm not saying that is the end-all, be-all. He needs to play because he needs scoring. I guess what I'm getting at is if you're the locker room and you're saying we don't want him in the locker room, then you need to show that he doesn't, that you don't need him. Because this is not a social club. This is a hockey club. This is a business, right? The, the, they're in the business of winning games. Whether you like him or not, that's what their business is all about. So if he can help them win games, then the question is, should he? Should he be there to do that? And if not, then the locker room that doesn't want him there needs to show that they've earned the right to say, I don't want him in this room. And so far, they're about a 500 club. I don't know that that's enough to say necessarily that they've earned that right. Didn't they already come out this summer and say it to Doug Wilson? When they went to him, uh, yeah, yeah, no, they said it, but I'm saying... Should that voice not just be able to say? Should that voice hold water? Should that voice hold weight? Right. I don't think they'd publicly say it. Nobody no, no, no. would publicly say it. But right. I think I think uh, it's already been known. It's already been told that they don't want him back. That was before any of this stuff. Yes. Came out in the summertime. Like I think right after the season had ended, right. and They had their exit interviews. So yes, they they've the words came out of their mouth. I I'm I agreeing with you. What I'm saying is. 
do those words hold weight or do are they just saying we just don't want him here and they okay that's cool but you guys aren't you guys aren't exactly putting up the performance that tells me we don't need him i think the proof is in the pudding that they're playing better hockey than they were I, in the last two seasons. And I agree. They are playing better than the last two seasons, but you also brought up, which I didn't bring up Evander Kane during this, but you also brought up during those two seasons that they hadn't had a training camp, that they hadn't had all these other things. They were sure. living out of Arizona, right? So there are other forces that work there. I also don't think that he was the only problem, and I don't think that the training camp was the only problem. I think collectively yeah. it was all just stacked up against them, mm-hmm. and I think... Having a training camp, not having Kane there, right. all that stuff now is taking off the weight, and now it's to me they're a much better team in a much better spot. I think they are absolutely a much better team than they were in the last two seasons. Um, I just don't know that being a 500 club is enough right. for uh, the forces that really I, have the pull to say we're not going to throw him back in the lineup. Necessarily. I brought this up, I think, with you earlier about uh, the Joe Thornton effect. Yeah, not having Joe Thornton on the team last year, how much would he have held Kane accountable to being on time? Yeah. Because that's kind of outside. I mean, it's supposed to be the coaching staff, you know, holding them accountable, which they said they regretted not doing. Mm -hmm. Same with Doug Wilson. Like, he kind of stepped up and said, I should, you know, we collectively should have done a better job. I think that's where Joe Thornton comes in. And I also think that's why they brought in Bonino and um, Cogs. Cogliano and Reimer, because mm-hmm. those guys are kind of like Joe Thornton, where mm-hmm. they're just holding everyone accountable. This is how you're professional. I don't care if you're a veteran or not. Like this is how you do things. Right. And I think that is also another piece that changed the culture. And I want to bring one parallel in. And again, this isn't me advocating for Evander Kane. I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate a bit here. My personal stance is I really don't think he ought to be back. Uh, whether it makes the team better. Stats wise and wins, whatever else, I think if it damages the room, that does more damage down the road. So uh, I'm not necessarily advocating for him. However, if you take a look at even just tonight's game, okay, the Canes, who do they have on defense? Tony D'Angelo. Okay, Tony D'Angelo, not exactly the same situation, but he was kind of similar in the in the he punched his teammate in the okay. locker room. Like yes. it's a similar kind of I mean not the same, but the, it's similar. The, the similarity is that he is not welcome in the New York Rangers locker room, right? That's the similarity. And the same thing with Evander Kane. Potentially, it sounds like he's not welcome in the Sharks locker room. So if you've got a guy like Tony D'Angelo, right? Now, the Canes take a chance on him. He is currently the leading scorer on the blue line for the Canes and the third leading scorer on the Canes, period. There's a reason why he got another chance. Sure. Of his talent. Love it. Are you saying then that Evander Kane's not talented enough? I'm saying the Sharks won't have him on the team. I'm saying somebody else will. Okay, that leads you to my next point then. <laughs> he's not untradeable. Oh, I, I don't he's think he's not tradable. untradable. Tony D'Angelo wasn't traded. Okay. He was stuffed in the minors sure. and then bought out. Okay. And then he signed with the Canes. That's what I think is going to happen in this situation. Okay. Fair enough. He'll go to another team, is the point. Yeah. Eventually. Maybe yeah. not this season, but I think okay. eventually he will not be on the Sharks. I still think the Toronto path of uh, half salary, half salary to, to double it up. I think that You also have to throw have picks to in with that. Yeah, you do. And I, I think that's going to hurt them even more, so I don't know. Mm. I don't know if that's a good idea. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. How about let's do a <laughs> roll call. Roll call. Tell us where you're watching from, and do you want... Do you want Kane or do you think he'll be back? What do you want? Both to questions. Do you want Kane back and do you think Kane will be back? Because they are two different questions and they So now you have three it. questions to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you watching? We're giving you guys work tonight. Where are you watching? <laughs> do you think he'll be back? Do you want him back? <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, so do we, uh, are we done with Evander? I think we're done with Evander. I mean, the, 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 the topic, comments, the topic yeah. of Evander. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so if we're done with that, let's go ahead and uh, kind of recap some of the uh, the games that were in this past week. We had uh, a big win against Minnesota. I thought that was one of the best games I'd seen the Sharks play. Yeah, I thought, uh, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but I thought they played really well and overcame a lot. Dumba, man, that guy, <laughs> that guy, I don't know how he didn't get suspended. Um, it, that wasn't the only hit he threw like that, too. Right. He threw one like that at Timo Meyer, and he saw it the last second. It was right in front of the Sharks' bench, and the whole bench yelled at him to get his head up, and yeah. he did, and he was luckily able to scoot out of the way. Bear Bonoff was not so lucky, and he got hit high, and I thought it was a total point of contact with his yeah. head. 
that's a, that's like the definition of what should be suspended. And I think it was ridiculous and extremely reckless the way he threw his body out there. Yeah, and, and I'm not I'm not trying to blame the victim here, but I think Barabanov needs to learn to protect himself better uh, in the NHL because I mean even tonight's game we talked about Dumba mm-hmm. in, on in Minnesota, but even in tonight's game where he was going into the corner, I don't remember with who. But he he was going in in a posture that was kind of low. His head's Nita already Reiner. yeah. Dead. Oh, Nita, there you go. His his head's already at the guy's elbow, right? Mm-hmm. He's got himself squatting down. He's reaching. He's not even the first guy in, and you just know that that reverse hit's coming, and just all of a sudden he just gets hammered. And it's not the first time. It's not even just the second time with the Minnesota game that we've seen it happen. I think Barabon has gotten clocked a few times, mm-hmm. you know, recently, just this season. Um, he needs to learn how to kind of protect himself a little bit better, I think. Otherwise, he's going to have a very short career, and the guy's just too talented for that. Mm-hmm. And this is something else that we are going to talk about is Dolan getting hurt. These two guys are kind of like they're the skilled guys, and Dolan's their leading goal scorer, or at least he was going into, going into the game. I think he still is, but he's hurt because he's kind of same thing. Like, he gets hit, I think, a decent amount, and he's a smaller guy. Mm-hmm. Barabanov, same thing. He got hit. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he sits the next game. Like, if he really got, like, a, a bad head injury or, or maybe it hits him later, he gets major headaches and has a concussion, yeah. he might sit. But um, I think uh, they they both need to learn. It's it's a different game than what they were used to, and and they need to keep their heads up. And, and... But also what I'm going to say is, Losing those two guys that really hurts the Sharks. Yeah, that's a lot of skill that they just don't they don't have enough to replace right now. It's working well when they're in the lineup, but like we said before, losing any of those big guys like yeah. we were talking about Hurdle, Couture, Carlson, any of those guys that's going to be worse. But um, right now, this is like the depth of the Sharks, and it's kind of showing with they went six periods without a goal. Yeah, two full games without a goal. So um, yeah, lucky to win, lucky to get. I guess for the week in those four games, go two and two. Yeah, no, I like it. I mean, if if you told me we we're going to split the points, and especially against these teams, I mean, Minnesota's mm-hmm. no, you know, not too shabby. And then you've got the Canes, who are essentially top in the league right now. Yep. Um, to pick up a win, even if it's an overtime win, uh, to pick up a win against them, uh, really good stuff from the Sharks that are missing, you know, their their top rookie in Dolan. Yeah, so. Uh, very happy with it. Uh, moving on from Minnesota, we played against the I'm trying to remember now. Uh, I'll look. St. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis Blues. That one did not go so well. <laughs> no. I, I think uh, St. Louis is a good, heavy, hard-hitting team. I think uh, last year they were a better team than what they showed, and I think they got hit hard with COVID and mm-hmm. all kinds of injuries. So I think um, they are – and the Tarasenko's back in yeah. full health. So yeah. so he's – you know, or that team is, is a very good team, and the Sharks just don't have the depth to deal with a team like that. Yeah. Um, so they just got, I think they got manhandled in that game. That's what I felt like. Yeah, from a 4-1 win to a 4-1 loss, and then, of course, going up against Ovechkin in the Washington Capitals. Uh, <laughs> skunked, 4-0. Ovechkin, I, I, I love Ovechkin. Yeah. I don't know if you guys watch a lot of hockey outside of the Sharks, but Ovechkin is probably the best goal scorer ever in the history of the NHL. He possibly could beat Wayne Gretzky's record, which is insane. That he needs I, what three, four more seasons? Three more, yeah, of like thirty-ish goals. Yeah. and he had two goals and an assist against the Sharks. Yeah, I mean, this guy's a slam dunk Hall of Fame player, um, possibly the goal leader by the time he's done. Yeah, it's it's insane. And even if he doesn't beat Gretzky's record, he's going to be in second place. Yeah, that that's just like you need to just. It, being on respect of what he's doing at his age yeah. now and still scoring at such a high rate, it's yeah. unreal. Anyway, I just I have a little man crush on. Yeah, I was gonna say just a little bit, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I like I always liked the Washington Capitals. I felt like they were the San Jose Sharks of the East, <laughs> right? Uh, except they actually won a cup recently, so um, now not so much. But yeah. I still I still always liked Washington, and I liked I liked Ovechkin. It was always like when they when Ovechkin and Crosby came in the league, it was like who do you like? Yeah. And everyone liked Crosby. I always liked Ovechkin better. I just like the way that he plays. He's Hard hitting, he shoots ridiculous yeah. slap shots, like just insane goal score. Just the best to me. Okay. We're going to have a new show called The Ovechkin Factors, <laughs> hosted mainly by Aaron. I'll make guest appearances. <laughs> man crush, big time. I got to respect it, man. Okay. There you go. Uh, I didn't happen to see all of the comments that came in, but I am interested in what you guys were saying 
about uh, whether or not Kane should be back. So sure. you want to run through some of those comments real quick, uh, and, and we'll, we'll get some of those responses. While he's checking that, I want to remind you guys that the finfactor.com support the show, hit that link, you'll see all the products that we have for sale, and we've expanded our inventory. We're, we're not holding inventory on a lot of these items. We're able to just get them shipped directly to you. So there's stuff in there like uh, fanny packs. Yeah. Um, we have a really nice uh, water bottle canteen kind of thing. We've got hoodies. We've got other such things that are in the store. So uh, please go check those out if you want to support the show. Uh, I think someone was saying they just cannot wait to rock the hoodie. I can't remember who it was now. It was a fan of the Adam. show. Well, Adam, too. Adam yeah. uh, picked one up, but there was another fan of the show who was saying, she's like, oh, I got to get that hoodie. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're looking forward to your order. Thank you so much. All right, I'll run through some of these. Uh, Thailand Backpacker from Vancouver, British Columbia, and I hope Kane comes back as long as he behaves. Uh, Peter Grandstrom, Palma de Mallorca, no and no. That's amazing. Um, Nicholas Egan, <laughs> watching from first place in the Fin Factor Hockey Fantasy League. He's in uh. first place. I'm in second. I jumped a second. After the yesterday. Uh, N. Hernandez, Mom's Basement. Kane has earned an opportunity to show what he can contribute to San Jose. Uh, Scott K., I love Kane's skill, but no, I don't want his toxic presence in the locker room. Devereaux Boxton, our classmate, San Jose. I'm cool off him coming back, and I don't think he'll come back. I'm cool of him coming back, and I don't think he will come back. Probably I'm cool with him coming yeah. back, yeah. Kellen Foster, Orange County. I do want Kane back for five games to trade him for a less steep price. Anthony Sanchez, Kane will be back if the whole team accepts him back in the locker room. If he does dress, he will have limited minutes. Um, uh, and Hernandez, Sharks need a player like Kane. Dumba and the Canes tonight were tossing and abusing San Jose without any concerns for repercussions. Um, uh, <laughs> Tevril said, Paul's giving me anxiety. Every five seconds, looks like he's going to knock that can over. <laughs> uh <laughs> Also, Anthony Sanchez wants to know what flavor of Waterloo you're drinking. Oh, uh, this would be strawberry. Yeah. Strawberry Waterloo. I don't know if we need to get the, the close-up. <laughs> Not sponsored. Not sponsored, no. Uh, if you happen yeah. to work for Waterloo, hit me up. Uh, go ahead. That's all I got. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I, I think I'm through them all. It's, it's kind of a, an interesting mix of the yeses and the noes. More, more yeses than I thought there would be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of impressed. I can't remember who it was, but somebody did like a, a Twitter poll or something, and it was uh, overwhelmingly no. It was like 75, 76, whatever it was, that percentage. Oh, knows. yeah. Go to Twitter. You'll get all the good people there. Well, <laughs> you still get the people there. So, I mean, what do you want? What, are, we have better people is what you're saying. Right. Okay, good. I'm just saying in general. Not everyone. Not everyone on right. Twitter is bad, but... Okay. Not everyone on Twitter is good. So Aaron's lumping the people that said no one with the horrible people on Twitter. There you go. No, that's not what I said. People said yes. <laughs> you, see, you see the moment when he realized? He's like, wait, no, what? <laughs> uh, Kellen Foster just said, there's a hoodie. I'm in. Nice. Yep. Looking yeah, forward to uh, your order there, Kellen. And when you get it, please, guys, uh, make sure that you take a picture uh, with your gear and you just send it over to us. We'd love to be able to post. And people buy our gear, but then they never send us the pictures. We, we wanted to show them off to you guys. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yep. Okay. Anything else? What we, we laughing about? Oh, let's see what else we're talking about. Nothing. We got everything as far as I can tell on the board. Yeah. There you go. We're happy with Reimer. Uh, D'Angelo was right. over a point per game. That was the comparison for Scott K. Wants to know if we make playoffs. Yeah. Do we bring Eklund back? Mm, okay. The question for me again is: Does his nine game, that whole deal, does that get ruined by bringing him back for playoffs? If he's if playoffs are exempt from that, I think it does because you remember when. Uh, Kale McCarr played against the Sharks when the Sharks went to the second round against Colorado. He came in right after college finished. Hobie Baker, finalist. I don't know if he won yeah, it, but he's yeah. a finalist. Um, and he was amazing in that series against the Sharks. But, right. um, you know, if they continued on because the Sharks beat him, would it have counted against his nine games? I don't know. That, I don't think it did. No idea. And that, that, that of course, is the question. Because if it does... I don't know that you bring him back. Um, I don't know that you bring him back for a potential first round exit. And for what? So you burn a year of his contract for what, a couple of games? Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. To me, it doesn't make sense. And if, also, like, if they get to the playoffs without him, then you. Why yeah. would you, why would you yeah. mess up the chemistry? And now, now, having said that, of course, if the Sharks were to make it deep into the playoffs, right, and you have an injury, and you've really got an opportunity to win and, and move on here, 
then you kind of have to start thinking really about it. You think the sharks are going deep? In no, the no, 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 I don't. I'm don't. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if I that's understand. the case, yeah. that is a scenario where I'm starting to think, okay, does it make sense? Even if it burns the the 10th game, right? Even if it burns that first year of the contract. I just, I don't think it's... If anything, they would bring him over to be in the press box to experience the atmosphere yeah. of a playoff game. Yeah. That's what I think. I don't think they would... I don't think he would play. Um... I just saw a good one. Nicholas Egan, let's get your predictions of when Bonino gets his first point. I say another month. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny okay. at this point. Before it's funny funny in a bad way because he had so <laughs> many chances and, and he, you see the frustration yeah. in his face every time. That poor guy. Oh. You know what the, it was for me it was when Cogliano kept trying to feed him with the empty net and he just could not Get the puck to him. He couldn't yeah. get the puck to Benino for the empty net goal. Yeah. That to me was the epitome of like you are snake bit, my friend. There's no one in the net, and you still can't put it in. Yep. It's just, you, yeah, poor guy. <laughs> Before we answer that question, though, I think it fitting to look at the games that are coming up to see if maybe there's an opportunity there for Benino to score. So on was it Wednesday? We've got Ottawa, yeah. Ottawa, yep. That's uh, that's a game that's. <laughs> someone commented earlier, and I'm not gonna be able to find it, okay. but. They said, because we beat Carolina, the top team, we're going to lose to Ottawa, the bottom team now. <laughs> Just because it's the Sharks. Okay. I think I think the Sharks will beat Ottawa. I hope they beat Ottawa. They should beat Ottawa. They should beat Ottawa. But it'll be, it'll right be, there. I think Bonino gets off the schneid against a team like Ottawa. You know, you need that, that slump buster, right? And yeah. then you uh, move on. Yep. Once you get past that first one, even he was saying it, it's just getting over that that hump. Once you get over that, that first, uh, you know, goal... Then it starts kind of uh, falling into place. The dominoes start to fall, right? So you think it'll be the next game that he gets? I think his he's, first point or first goal. I th- point. I'll say okay. point. I think he's 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 done with the goose eggs. Uh, come Ottawa. It's amazing he doesn't have a point. Like it's it is just a deflection. Someone else buries it. He doesn't have to score, right? Like he just has nothing. It's. I feel like. Well, I wouldn't say I would have a point, but <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You Who wouldn't have a point. You, you'd be the only thing you'd have is maybe about thirty seconds of ice time. And they pull you off the rink. Come on, man. Aiden Hill is outscoring him right now. Yes, he, he is. Two assists. <laughs> that, if I were Aiden Hill, I would give him so much flack. Every I'd day. be giving him Every so day. much support if I was Aiden Every Hill. Day. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Someone might shoot it off your pads, <laughs> and you get an assist. I would just dig in there and just. Keep your head up, buddy. And you know he's working hard. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know he's working hard, That's the why poor guy. I think it's funny. I think it's funny. Uh, because it's so, like, it, it's so unreal and uh, not plausible that you could go this long without a point. Well, it's not just Ottawa. Okay, so then after, after Ottawa, Friday against Toronto, right? right. Okay, he's probably not scoring there. But um, the next game, Chicago. Uh, Flurry's turned his season around. Has he now? Yeah, he's been playing very. Uh, the last like eight games or so, he's had like over a nine twenty save percentage. Okay, he's, he's putting some good games together. So, I guess it just took him some took him a while to get the Vegas hangover trade off of his head and get his Chicago brain going. Was he playing that bad, or was it the defense in front of him? Both. Yeah, but Flurry was not his typical self yeah, either. Yeah, so yeah. he kind of needs to be standing on his head for. I think I think he's kind of a goalie that needs a lot of shots to feel the game and get into the game. Okay. If he's in, if he's in one of those games where they don't have a lot of shots, I think he's not as good. Out of the rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But well, he's um, getting a lot of shots there. I mean, either way, hopefully for me, I, I think I think Benito gets a point in Ottawa. Um, maybe not so much in Toronto because he, he's he's on the fourth line now. At least in this game, they had him on the fourth line. Mm-hmm. Uh, they pushed Weatherby up uh, to the third line center, so he was on the fourth line with Cogliano. And uh, Scott Reedy, who made his NHL debut tonight. There's a couple. Of Scott K said, who's this Scott Reedy guy? Will he make a difference? And Anthony said, Scott Reedy is the CUDA leading scorer. Scott Reedy was in contention with Jasper Weatherby for the fourth line center position. Mm-hmm. Um, really training camp, right? Yeah, during training camp. Really yeah. good competition between the two of them. And they, just, they just picked Weatherby. And it was the right pick, I think. Weatherby's been awesome. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, Scott Reedy is is right there with him. So uh, at least for that position, um, he's he's right in the mix. Uh, apparently, we can't bring Eklund back for playoffs oh. because it's a different rule for European players versus college players. College players have more of an in to get into the playoffs, which makes more sense because you always see that 
You always see the NCAA players when they finish their season coming in. So then you change the question then. The question then becomes, uh, do you bring him back for game 82 if you know that you're going to be a playoff team? Because then you can bring him back during the regular season and he can play. Right? You're getting complicated. I am getting complicated. You have to complicate things. Well, I know when, when this is one of the things was when their season ends in Sweden, um, it ends earlier than the NHL season. So right. he has a chance to come back because he's under contract to play with them. He's, his contract, because he's a first-round pick, he's able to go to the AHL. Right. Um, if he was a second-round pick, he wouldn't be eligible to go to the AHL. You'd have to go back to Sweden. Um, that's the deal with their country for, or their league. Um, so he, the, Sweden, the Swedish league would finish earlier, so there was a chance that he could come back. Let's say the Sharks are in a playoff position yeah. or fighting for one with two weeks left to go, and this guy's ready to come back, and he's in really good game shape right yeah. now. I could see it coming. I could see him, them bringing him back, especially if there's an injury. Can you imagine? Yeah. Hey, we're only two points out of a playoff spot, or we're two points ahead in a playoff spot. We want to make it, and Eklund's available. Yeah, I think absolutely they can yeah. bring him over. Well, he would have to be absolutely tearing it up in your garden, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he would have to be absolutely tearing it up. But that also means they have to be in a playoff spot by the trade deadline so that they don't start trading away pieces like Hurdle. That's true. So there's a lot of moving pieces for that to happen, for Eklund to come back. We are not quite at the uh, quarter game mark, the Thanksgiving mark, although we're getting close to Thanksgiving, uh, for us to be able to say this is kind of where we are. I mean, even right now we can kind of tell they're a 500 team, but uh, we'll see uh, after Thanksgiving, the next couple of games, uh, just that little bit more. And then, of course, as the season goes on, I think that kind of halfway point, getting close to the trade deadline, that's when you really know for sure it's like it's locked in. We're not making predictions anymore at that point. That's just what they are. Devereaux yeah. just helped explain the rule. When an entry, uh, entry level slide for a contract to slide, they have to be 18 or 19 as of September 15th. Mm-hmm. They don't play a minimum of 10 NHL games, but that includes regular season and playoffs. The AHL does not count. Their contract is considered to slide or extend by one year. So even if you played like five games, went to your garden, then came back, played... Uh, a couple games at the end of the season, and then played more playoff games, that would go over the 10-game limit, is what he's saying. If he plays one more game, he's yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, the yeah. contract slides, yeah. I'm saying even if he, yeah. well, he even if it was a playoff that. game and it wasn't, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, who was that? Uh, Devereaux. Devereaux, uh, thank you so much for the clarification. Do appreciate it. Not all the time, I know Aaron's got the laptop out here, but not all the time can we uh, look up all those uh, fine details. So getting yeah, a little hard. extra help from the community. Thank you so much. Uh, Navy 47, what are your thoughts on the Olympics? Because the Olympics are being... They're great. They're playing this year. The the players are allowed to play. He said, what about the boycott for the Winter Olympics in 2022? I heard that on the news today, that there's a possible boycott. I unfortunately don't know a whole lot about the Olympics and boycotts and all that whatnot. So um, I really don't have much of a comment there, but I don't know if... You've got why, why did I even ask you? I that? don't know why you asked, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't see five rings up here. I see a Sharks logo. So. It's in China. Yeah, the, the Olympics are in China. Okay. And there's a lot going on with China these days mm-hmm. that you should probably pay attention to. All right. Maybe just a little. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a, I, didn't read it, I didn't hear about the actual boycott, so, but I, I knew that there's, there's always protests and all this stuff about what China's doing. In fact, China's probably going to ban us for even talking about it right now on YouTube. <laughs> So, Hi, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that would I, that would suck if they didn't play because I love watching Olympic hockey. I think it's fun. Yeah, um, I know the players always enjoy it. It's always a big deal of who makes Team Canada, but it's almost a bigger deal of who doesn't, who doesn't? make Team yeah. Canada yeah. because there's just so many players in the pool for it. Um, the U.S. team is kind of becoming that team where it's a bigger story of who doesn't make it. Mm. Um, Jack Eichel is American, but he would not be ready to play. Right. He's going to be ready right around then, so that would have been cool to see him play. Um, anyway, um, I always like it. And it will be weird, though, because if it's in China, that means it's going to be on at, like, ridiculous hours yeah, early yeah, in the morning. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, that I love watching it, and it's a good – like, not on, on top of that, it's a good break for the players that aren't going to the Olympics yeah. and to get – healthy and and not be so banged up and i think it makes a better product on the nhl um yeah and you know you're taking away kind of all the stars to go play in the olympics but a lot of the times um 
it's like the depth that would come back that are that are healing up, right? Yeah. And and playing better hockey. So I think it makes a better product overall. Yeah, yeah I think in terms of what are my thoughts on on the Olympics, like I I too enjoy Olympic hockey. You know, it's it's always nice to see in you know, all the countries that are uh, out there. You know, the players representing their countries and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I, I always think back to that whole golden goal with Sidney Crosby with the you know oh, US and Canada. Such a weak goal. I know. But- but I mean, I always think back to that, and it was just like it was one of those where it was it was very exciting for you know yeah. people in Vancouver, I believe was, mm-hmm. was what it was, uh, very exciting for them. Um, and you know, I, I always liked the idea of having the professionals uh, uh, doing it in the Olympics. Um, I, I was never really a huge fan of kind of watering down the talent pool, uh, especially with you know Team Canada and Team USA. Um, I, I was just never a huge fan of that. I like that it's the best. Uh, players, because really the Olympics, the spirit of the Olympics for me is it's you want the absolute best humans uh, in each event doing what they do, seeing what they can do. So uh, to not water that down with players that aren't quite the best of the best, I think does a disservice to kind of the, the heart of the Olympics almost. But uh, there are some people that, that think that pros don't belong in the exactly. Olympics, and yeah. I get that, but that then you're not getting the best performance possible for any one event, right? And I yeah. think that's kind of what it's about, is to showcase what humans can do. You know, the, you know humans are awesome kind of thing, right? right? So that's my take on it. I know. I like I like Sam. I like having the NHL players in it. Um, I think it's kind of funny when the NHL doesn't go, and then you get these guys that are like what one year retired and they're they're playing for their country so yeah. it's like guys like our age like playing it's like oh it's kind of cool it's the old dudes <laughs> and then the super young college age because they're not professionals yeah. yet so they're going on playing um I, I could see both sides but for team usa it doesn't bode well because yeah. other team other countries would have their players going i just remembered and i really liked it too team north america oh i forgot about the young that. guns yeah that was that was like a dream team. You mm-hmm. go back and look at that roster. That was that was crazy good. Yeah, but neither here nor there. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. It's just more hockey is is good for me, so I'm good with it. Yeah, there you go. Something to watch, you know, outside of the NHL, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Non Sharks games. Any other uh, last minute comments we got here? Um, I can't wait to see Team China play Team USA or Canada in the Olympics. We might see a football score. Probably be more yeah, than a football yeah, way score. More, way more. Um, oh, Navy 47 said, A boycott would mean the government officials would not attend the Winter Games in February, but it would not prevent U.S. athletes from competing. We got a bunch of lawyers in the chat today. I love it, dude. <laughs> That's cool. People have given us all the explanations. Thank you so it much, helps. guys, for chiming in. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. All right, we're good? Yeah. Episode 134 is in the books. Hey, guys, thank you again so much for uh, joining us here, tuning in. We appreciate not only the comments that are flowing, but we also appreciate uh, you guys uh, sharing to all of your friends and your family, anybody else you think might be interested in checking out the show as well. Uh, So we do appreciate you guys uh, doing that. And, of course, uh, we didn't have any Super Chats tonight, but if you guys support the show via Super Chat or Venmo or just going to the store at the finfactor.com, Hayden, the support the show link. We got uh, a lot more products in there. Way more stuff, yeah. So uh, probably more than double what we had uh, Mm -hmm. to start off with. But the original stuff is still there if you uh, want to get some of the originals. Uh, like the hats and t-shirts and stickers and that kind of thing. So uh, it's all there. Uh, Feel free to support the show. And, of course, we do appreciate that. So for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. What are you laughing about? Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.